You ever wonder if an inexpensive smartwatch, something like this, can hang with some of the bigger names like Samsung, Apple, Garmin? I was wondering as well, so I tried out the Aegis, 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 I guess, KE5 smartwatch. I was very curious and I got some interesting results from it. Let me talk about it. Stick around. All right, so let's see what this comes with. I have obviously not opened this at all. Packaging is nice, not that anybody cares about that. So user manual, looks like we got multiple languages. Start in some English and then we get into the other languages. So the actual amount of user manual you get is pretty small. I'm assuming there's a lot more going on when it comes to the online um, and the app charging cable with the uh, magnetic. So obviously we'll have to be charging it. The watch itself, pretty lightweight by the way, I'll weigh that at some point. And a spare camo band, I like camo bands obviously. So not a ton going on, it's pr relatively straightforward, simple packaging. And when we peel off the uh, plastic goo, I might have to take the uh, band off to get that off easily. It looks like removing the band's actually pretty straightforward too, which is cool. So replacing the band is not gonna be a Herculean chore like it might be on some watches. So if you wanna swap in the camo band, it shouldn't drive you too nuts. Oh, and obviously I don't have the coordination to do this easily. There we go. So there's the one band. We'll pop the other one off. So there's the plastic off. Yeah, all right, cake. So. There you go, looks really nice. You can see the side flashlight, four buttons. Let me uh, plug this in and let's plug it in, see what it does. All right, so it's charging. I will set it up, we'll uh, run some tests and we'll see what we get. Wish me luck. Let's talk really quickly about the user interface and some of the features on this watch. First, there are five different screen faces. If you just hold the middle for a second, it'll drop down and you can scroll through them. Oh, sorry. Let me try that again. Yes, and you can just scroll across five different faces. I happen to like this one. It's kind of my favorite. If you scroll down, you get kind of the more broad settings. So we have battery. If you want to save battery, you can do that. You can do the do not disturb. Uh, you can adjust the brightness if you so desire. You can go straight to settings. We'll talk more about that in a second. SOS, which some of you may like and some of you may find annoying. Information about the system itself, if you want to get into that. And a flashlight, which was surprisingly handy. I thought it was kind of maybe going to be a gimmick. But I'm telling you guys, I didn't hate it. And you can go and change your call stuff if you want. You can make phone calls directly through this and you can answer and talk to people directly through it so you don't have to pull the phone out of your pocket if you want. If we swipe up, we get into our messages. Pardon me if I blur out names there because obviously that's my friend. If you scroll over to the side, you get real basic menu with your phone, your Tom, Temp, all that stuff and you can get into those little mini settings if you want. So another option, there's you know my lack of activity thus far today. Uh, let's see, what do we get? End messages again. If we hit the upper left button, that's our workouts. Now one thing I did find is there's not a ton of workouts in this. Oh, I don't wanna work out. You mostly get cardio stuff like walking, running, hiking, cycling, basketball, badminton, soccer, elliptical, rope skipping. Uh, let's see what else. Upper right button gets you into the broader settings menu or all the apps menu in effect. And there's a lot of stuff in here, guys. So, you know, really briefly telephone, your contacts, your call records, voice assistant. Um, that is just your amount of workout. The workout are the workouts themselves. Workout records are historical record. Heart rate is your current heart rate. If you're wearing it, it'll take it. Sleep is how well you, or how non-well you slept. Blood oxygen, SpO2 level, your messages again, the weather. Um, if you are a woman and you wanna track your cycles, that gives you the option, you can set that up. Obviously, since I don't qualify for that, I didn't set it up. You can pause or restart your music or whatever you're playing on your phone. There's a little breath training app, which 
I didn't really mess with. There is a stopwatch timer, alarm clocks. Uh, let's see what's the collection code. You can, if you want to put in, like if you're using any of these when it comes to your pay apps, didn't have Venmo, has a few. You can set up a business card for your social media. There's a calendar, a calculator, find phone, which is useful. Camera, you can use this to, um, if you remotely trigger your smartphone camera, your shutter, that's kind of useful. SOS again, compass, which I found to be actually reasonably decent in terms of work. You can calibrate it. Barometer, which is cool. And then obviously we can get to our settings there as well. Uh, let's see if I think I double tap or if I hold the bottom left, I forget what it does. Yeah, I get the flashlight again. So it is directly button accessible. Oh, come on, turn off. Oh yes, you can do the signal as well. There, and if you hold it, you turn that off. The bottom right button, you can program. It's normally a back button, but it is programmable. So if you want to program it as something else, that is useful to you as well. So it does have a step counter as well, obviously, and it, that resets every day, gives you weather, things like that. So uh, the display is pretty bright. Uh, one thing I'll tell you is if you're wearing polarized sunglasses, you may not be able to see the display very well, so that may be a consideration for you as well. But reasonable amount of features in a watch at this price, and I'm sure if you saw my uh, previous unboxing, you see that this one comes with two bands for the price as well. It does not have a screen protector, but I haven't had any real issues when it comes to the screen. I haven't really beat this watch to death, but it uh, has thus far held up pretty well under a couple of weeks of testing. Reasonably straightforward user interface, not too weird and nothing goofy that you have to mess with. Okay, so what did I think of the Aegeus KE5? Let me give you the bottom line up front because I don't want to stall and, and him and haw. There's about four things that you really don't get with this watch. So quickly, the provision for an always on display, which some watches do, this one does not do. It uh, is one of those where you either have to hit a button or set the raise to wake. So you're gonna not be able to just glance at it without moving your wrist up and see the time or any meaningful display. So you do not get that you do not get a standalone GPS. So if you're one of those people who likes to go hiking or you want to go trail running or something like that, this is probably not the watch for you. It does have a step counter and it does have some reasonable fitness tracking, but it doesn't have a great depth of fitness tracking. Like if you look at some of the other watches out there, there's like probably 200 activities in there, everything from like salsa dancing to all sorts of crazy stuff. This watch is not gonna give you that. So it's a somewhat bare bones fitness tracker, but it does give you some amount of that functionality. If you're used to the ability to download or configure hundreds of watch faces, then this watch is also not going to do that for you. It has five watch faces. And I found them all to be reasonably useful and visible and nice and bright. But if you are looking to download extra watch faces or have some developer community that makes watch faces that you can use, with this, you're not gonna get that either. So uh, be aware of that. On the other side, I did find that this watch has features that are missing from some other smartwatches of its ilk. One, the ability to make and receive phone calls directly through the watch I thought was pretty cool. I like that a lot. I found the notifications set up to be reasonably reliable. There are some other more bargain smartwatches that I've tried where the notifications were a little bit spotty. This did not suffer from that. It, it, whenever I got a notification, I could look and I could see the notification and it's eminently configurable. If you wanna set it to where you only get notifications from text messages, then you can do that. But if you want Facebook messages, Instagram, like any of those notifications that pop up on your smartphone, you can have this thing give you every notification that your phone is set up to do, that is doable. The, I get so many notifications that I find that level of connection to my phone to be a little bit mind numbing. So I don't do that. I just set it up for the ones that I want. But like I said, you can go as little or as wide as you want. Or if you don't want notifications on this at all, you can not set it up. You can say, nope, no notifications and you'll also be good to go. Uh, I didn't test severe water resistance like uh, showers, washing dishes, things like that. I think it'd be good for swimming. This watch is not gonna put up with diving. There's no way, no how. I found the heart rate sensor to be reasonably accurate. The blood 
uh, SpO2 level, the oxygen level, it was within the same kind of boundaries that I got from a more high-end smartwatch. I didn't compare it to one of the finger ones that gives you like probably the best, best SpO2 levels. But in general, I thought that the for a wrist-based fitness device, the information that it gave was reasonably accurate or as accurate as I need it to be in a wrist-based thing. Obviously, no wrist-based device is going to substitute for uh, real medical devices, but it gives you some idea of what's going on. Calorie counts were okay. They were kind of within the margin of error when it came to running and walking. So I, I got no issues with that. The fact that it comes with two bands is actually pretty cool. Every other smartwatch that I've gotten it, no matter the price point, if I want other bands, I'm gonna have to go out and buy them. I like the flashlight. I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, I found it way more useful than I thought I would. It was um, surprising to me that I ended up using it as much as I did. The SOS, I could take or leave but I think maybe some people would find it useful. And so if you need some sort of noise making, light flashing thing on your wrist, you can have that. My real shock was the battery life. I was getting somewhere around two weeks with kind of standard use, not crazy. Like I wasn't like always cranking on all of the screen time. So, but to get two weeks out of a smartwatch, I think is actually pretty good. It's kind of in line with some of the others that I have used that weren't Samsung or Apple watches because those things are battery hogs. But in general, I was pretty impressed with the battery life on this thing. If I back up and I talk about this watch and who's it for, what would I recommend? If you are looking to get into a smartwatch and you don't want to spend a ton of money for something that you may or may not enjoy, may or may not get use out of, you're just kind of trying to test the waters, this might be a really good option. For that matter, even if that's not you and you don't need standalone GPS, you're not worried about always on display and you don't need like 200 different activities in your fitness tracking, you just want a nice bright display and you want something that gives you notifications from your phone, this might be your watch. And I tell you, even, even at a higher price point, this watch or its functionality, it might be for you. Like I said, I found myself pretty impressed overall. Uh, I was shocked at how much I like this watch, really price point aside. Now, like I said, if you wanna go hike out into the wilderness and you need something to be able to track you back or you wanna be able to send lat long coordinates to somebody like, hey, I'm here right now, not your watch, but I don't think they ever designed it to be that watch. And to be clear, I suspect they could, but then if they wanna throw a GPS into this thing, you're talking about probably another 100 bucks added to the price of this. And if it's something you don't use and don't care about, then why pay for it? Uh, that's you know my general thought. In general, guys, I like the watch. I was really, really impressed with it, especially for its price point, like surprisingly so. I think it honestly, in the aspects that it has, performed better than some watches that I've played with that were more money. I'll end this here, guys. I like the watch. I enjoyed testing it and uh, I will probably leave it in my watch rotation for any time I'm not gonna go running on a trail or anything like that. Um, it looks nice, you know, it's sharp. It's not too, too flashy or weird. It just looks like a nice smart watch. You know, it's not going to ever take the place of a Rolex. You know, this, it's not that kind of timepiece. It's just a nice functional smart watch. Anyway, I'll end this here, guys. Thank you for watching. I appreciate you guys. As always, I know that I've kind of veered off into the gear universe pretty heavily, but I think I got one or two cool videos coming up that you guys also might be interested in. As always, if you've got any questions, comments, or concerns, hit me in the comments. If you appreciate my content and you wanna see more of it, subscribe, like, hit the notification bell, guys, all those wonderful YouTube things. Seriously, I couldn't be where I am in as much as I am without every single one of you guys watching my videos. Eternally grateful for that. Take care, stay safe. I'll talk to you soon. Get him, Jay.